Oh, sports fans, it's your old friend Lucky, and today is September 11th, 1992, and we're getting on the Space Chef Enterprise this evening, and we're going on a little ride. All right, that was my uh, really, really bad Irish uh, goodbye. Today is Wednesday, September 11th, 2019. We're going on a little trip today out onto the internet. And the reason being is let's say that you've had an old ThinkPad that's been sitting on a shelf somewhere collecting dust, waiting for you to do something with it. Because you pulled it out of the garbage and you thought it was going to be like awesome. And then it just sat there and you didn't know what to do with it. So. That's not the case with this one. It already has something on it. But I'm going to show you how to do what that is with your old crusty ThinkPad or laptop that works, but you wanted to do something more interesting. So let's start. Number one, you need to decide which thing you're going to load on this laptop. And I'm assuming that if you're on my video that it's going to be some kind of Linux variant. I'm going to guide you down the straight and narrow, and we're going to go to Ubuntu and just download that. So Ubuntu is a distribution of Linux, of an open source operating system that you can use instead of Windows. But I'm using a Windows computer because that's probably what you have. If you have a Mac, you can kind of follow along, but you're going to have to figure out some of the details yourself. So I'm just going to go to the downloads and I'm going to download, I'm going to download 1904 because that is more fun. Um, there's 1803 LTO, LTS, which means that it's more stable, but for the kinds of playtime, you know, you're probably going to end up reinstalling Ubuntu like five or six different times. So magic happens and, oh look, we have an ISO now and it's two gigabytes. All right, great. Now, how do we get that onto something that we can put on our other computer? You could burn a disc, but I think that most of you probably don't even have any spare DVD drives or a DVD drive in your computer that you use on a regular basis. Number two is a flash drive that um, you have laying around. This just happens to be like a 30 gig or a 64 gig. Um, it just needs to be larger than uh, two gigabytes. So like a four gig or an eight gig little flash drive will work just fine. Next, we're going to the Google uh, well, we're, we're already at the Google. We're just going to search for etcher.io. And this is a program that will flash your USB drive with that download that you had. So I'm going to download this for Windows. Uh, there are various other tools for other operating systems. You'll have to find them. Etcher may be available. I don't know. So I'm going to open Etcher from Etcher dot, well, Bellina dot IO, but it's the same program, Etcher dot IO. Oh, and look, it's the Apache license that I have to agree to. Okay, I, I, I guess we'll agree to that. All right, so we install. And I guess we have to go and launch it. Etcher. Etch. Etcher. Etcher. Where you at, buddy? Oh, it automatically launched for me. I have to click. There it is. So, number one, select your image. Downloads. Ubuntu, really should organize these. Select a target. So plugging in what was an arch disk, plug that in. It already knows that it's the SanDisk USB. Make sure that you don't have anything on it first. Go check, go check right now. Arch. 
Okay, this is an arch disk. It is safe for me to click this flash button. SanDisk USB, the one I just plugged in. Click the flash. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, see you in a second. Here we go. And flash complete. All right. So we take our handy dandy now Ubuntu drive. And we plug it into our computer. And now here comes the part that's going to be different for every machine. So each machine has some settings in it that will allow you to get to something called the boot menu. And that allows you to select a temporary startup device. So for me, I had to hit the enter button to get this screen. And now I'm hitting F12 per the instructions. And then from this screen, I have to find the thing that lines up with my drive. So I know that this is made by SanDisk and it's USB. So I'm able to find a USB SanDisk drive uh, connected. So if this old machine of yours had Windows 10 on it, um, it might boot up pretty quickly. If it had Windows 8, the same kind of thing. Windows 7 takes a little bit longer. If it's older than Windows 7, um, it, it will, not to say that it won't boot from USB, it's just you may need to do a few more things. So what other things might you need to think about on your laptop to get to this point? You might have to hit some function buttons along the top, the enter button. Um, generally, you can you can um, you can find the model number of the device and go on Google and find out how to get into the BIOS or how to get into the um, boot up menu. Um, you can also just mash buttons and play with it for a half hour until you find the right combination of buttons that works. Um, if you can get into the BIOS. Um, then sometimes there are some other settings called secure boot that you have to disable. It's a little bit beyond the scope of this, but if you Google around, look up secure boot, that is, if you're having problems past this point, then maybe that will get you in a direction. Disabling it and switching from UEFI to a regular BIOS type boot. But anyway, I was able to get to here. I'm going to click next. And... So this is the bootloader, and I'm going to click uh, try. I'm just going to let it go, and it's going to boot up into the live version of, of not Arch, of Ubuntu. Uh, and that'll give you a good idea of um, what it's like without even installing anything on here. It's just going to start up, and if you were to just turn off the power and unplug this disk right here, then your computer would go back to how it was before. A lot of people actually just use this disc as is to do this kind of thing. Um, and you know, if you just want to play with what it's like to, to go on the internet with, um, uh, Ubuntu, then this is like a quick and easy way. You'd come up here, you would go to find a Wi-Fi. So your Wi-Fi settings are up in the top right hand corner. If you use the regular menus, you look for what's around. And I just happen to know that I can get a free virus with my download if I sign up by midnight. So I'm going to connect. And then eh, look, it's got Firefox already installed. So you can just go ahead and launch that. It's a little slow. And it comes with the factory bloat. Uh, let's go to google.com. Oh, Wi-Fi password's wrong. Okay, so here's challenge number one. I can't get online for whatever reason. But if your computer is equipped with a network jack, this is likely a way that you can get around that little kerfuffle temporarily. Uh, sometimes when you install Ubuntu, um, you won't even see your wireless adapter in here unless what you install includes non-free... Um, blobs or non-free software. Sometimes that is a software setting during the installation. Um, and it happens a lot on um, network cards that the manufacturer of the wireless card, such as Netgear, Realtek, Intel, whoever it is, did not release it as open source. And um, 
by default, it's not included unless you're allowing the non-free. It's not that you have to pay for it. It just means that it's not open. So play around with your Ubuntu system, but if you want to install it, you can click the installer from the desktop or back at that black screen, you could also do that. But this is a perfectly acceptable way of, of going through the installation. So you click install, you pick your keyboard. Uh, did I say US? So if you do have your ethernet connected and you're connected to the wireless, however you're connected, you'll be able to download updates while installing Ubuntu. And this is where I'm going to select that feature that says install third-party software for graphics and Wi-Fi hardware. So this particular unit happens to have a slightly newer Intel i7 and a NVIDIA GeForce um, processor in it. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and, and click install the third-party things. Uh, and yeah, we're going to do the normal installation. And I'm going to click continue. And when you get to this screen, this is where... This is, this is where if you're not ready to separate ways with this laptop and stop using it the way you previously did, uh, this is where you have the opportunity to just unplug it, turn it off, and go back to Windows. If you click Next, it starts a process of erasing everything on this computer as if like, well, if you, if you messed it up, you'd only have Ubuntu, you wouldn't have any of your data, you wouldn't have any of your files. So if this is a machine that you've already moved stuff off of or you found in the garbage, that's great. If it's a machine that like you use on a regular basis and it has some files on it, like some pictures of your cat or your children, you should really consider buying yourself a backup drive, backing everything up to there, and then, and then going forward with this. And then make a copy of this on another one too. Um, so I already did that. So we're going to go ahead and click install. Um, I'm not going to do anything else, but you can read the options there. Okay, you had one more thing to click. You have to click continue if you're really certain. Uh, and this will, this will render your prior installation invalid. And you're, you're really committing to this Ubuntu thing. All right. So pick your country. Make sure your time zone's correct. Uh, this is where you get to be creative. Um, I'm always Bob, and that's fine with me. And I'm going to give it a super secret password. Told you it was super secret. And then we're going to let it install. And it's going to dance around like a dingo that it is. And we'll see you back right now. Oh, sweet. I don't think I ever finished this level. Oh, I gotta pay attention. Get into the air. Oh, maybe we should go back to Ubuntu. Amidst all the advertisements, they do point out that there really is good community support. So, Go online, check it out, see what's available. Stupid Hangouts. I mean, just look, install Jack on audio on Ubuntu, and you've got the Ubuntu forum, you've got some GitHubs, like there's some great info that's just out there. This may be relevant, this may be relevant. Install video editor on Ubuntu. You get a Vidimux, you got, uh, I don't recognize or recommend any of those things. Ooh. Where's the one I was using the other day? Caden Live. There it is. There we go. Caden Live. Now they're doing it on 1604. What about... Well, you can always go at older versions. If you want a stable, you could go back to the downloads and use 1804 because it's 
a lot more stable. I was just using 1904 for funsies, but you can read the infos on how to do a whole bunch of different things. Mm. All right, so it'll say, we're done. I'm gonna restart now. And we're gonna boot it back up. Remove the disk and press enter and it will reboot for you. And there we go. And we let it just do its normal thing. There we are loading Ubuntu Linux from the laptop, not from the flash drive. And look, there I am, Bob. And I'm gonna put in my super secure password. And we're logging in for the first time after installing. So I hope you found this video useful and um, you know, it gives you a high level of how to get connected to uh, a how to how to get your old weird ThinkPad that's crusty and dusty off the shelf and uh, get some good use out of it. Um, you can walk through or skip any of this stuff that pops up when it first comes up. I'm just grabbing it to get it out of the way. Um, yeah, so hope you enjoyed and got something useful out of it. Subscribe or not.